um, we are pleased to have Napoleon Bakes, the digital strategist of Web Wednesday Ventures Limited. Um, he's going to deliver his speech on digital marketing. Let's have a big welcome. Good afternoon. Am I on? Hello, hello. Hi, everybody. Uh, I like to walk around, so can you, can you all hear me? Oh, nice. It's very loud in here. Get started. Um, I'm here to talk to you about digital marketing, and I have some examples uh, of crowdfunding related stuff. I have half an hour, usually, I do this in an hour, so I might speak really quickly. But let me start um, with who I am. That's me. I've been in digital marketing here for 20 years. I know the industry well. I run a community called Web Wednesday of 7,000 entrepreneurs, digital marketers. We have meetings in Hong Kong once a month. And if you're on WeChat, you should be able to scan that. Connect to me. We don't use name cards anymore. Throw away your paper. So the internet is all about timing. We live in a very uh, short-sighted world where humans have less attention than a goldfish. Right? A goldfish apparently has eight seconds of attention, and we have four. So I want to, uh, given that your attention is very short, I want to show you that marketing is all about being topical. Do you know who this guy is? If you don't know who he is, put your hand up. If you don't know who he is, <laughs> good joke. This is Xi Jinping. He's the big boss of the biggest country in the world, the biggest internet country in the world, the biggest e-commerce country in the world, the biggest producer of all the gadgets that you see in this room. There is currently the 19th uh, National Party Congress in China happening now, at this very moment. And they're all listening, unlike you lot. Um, so Tencent has launched a game. And what you can do is you can clap. So if you're on WeChat, scan that and you can now play this game. What is amazing, this game was launched yesterday. It's already been played 845 million times. 845 million times. That's shocking in one day. Now, of course, you could say that's because the Chinese government is watching the internet and we all have to look good. But this is a game, I think it's very clever. It's launched by Tencent on their social media platform, WeChat, to teach people how to spend money, right? It's a game, uh, and you can share it. So get on there if you're on Weixin. See if you can break my record. I got 491 using all my fingers for 10 seconds, all right? Try it out. Very clever use of timing, topical, and social media, teaching people to buy stuff. So I'm going to take you on a little journey because in the digital world, the problem is we always talk about technology and platforms, but actually what we should be focusing on is customer journeys. What do people do? How do they use technology? So this is a little journey that I took, literally. I, I traveled from Hong Kong to Cape Town to visit my friend at a big party in the uh, wine region of South Africa. Is anybody here from South Africa? Does anybody here like South African wine? Well, you've all got to learn how to drink South African wine. It's better than New Zealand wine, right? So this is my journey. Before I go, I go, oh my God, how much does it cost to get? It cost me. Amy? Yeah, right. How much would it cost me in South Africa? So I use uh, an... OTA, an online service, Skyscanner, to get comparative prices, right? I don't go to my travel agent. I love her. I get to give me competing prices. Try use the phone. Give me the mic. Hello? Hello? Sorry, it's in and out. This is better. So I use Skyscanner and I get competing prices. And I go, oh, not bad. Then, um, I say, where am I going to stay? I've never been to South Africa. What the hell am I going to do? So I go on to C-Trip, right, which is the Chinese Expedia, 
And I went on to Sea Trip because everybody in the world wants a Chinese tourist. And I tell you, the deals are 10 times better on Sea on Trip than they are on TripAdvisor, Expedia. So if you can't read Chinese, next time you buy a ticket or a hotel, get a mate of yours along. I got $300 off per day because I could read Chinese, right? Sea Trip was my answer. And then South Africa being a large place, I got a car, again, using a, a website, an app, Car Rentals. So if you look at my journey, I haven't gone, this is all via my phone, sitting at my home, having a, a nice cold glass of South African wine. So I was preparing myself for the trip. And then um, I get my ticket. My ticket is there, uh, I save it all into my phone. And what's amazing is I know the weather, so I can start thinking what I have to pack. Um, I also am a bit worried about my bags, so this is where the advertising comes in. They start to say, oi, we sell insurance. Isn't that much nicer to buy it when you're in the moment, right? We sell insurance. I heard Cape Town was a dodgy place, so I got some insurance. And then, you know, I'm on a plane for uh, 12 hours. I don't want to watch the latest movie, because I've seen them all with my children. So, it, again, Audible, the, uh, the uh, book reading software, sells me a book to download and listen to on the airplane. And, of course, our friends Uber. They're already, before I've even left, Uber is already saying to me, you need to get there quickly and safely. So I've already got all of this sold to me. And this is what I like about this. This is a new form of advertising where it's very, very topical. These companies know I'm about to travel, so they target and they form partnerships. They don't put banner ads. I'm not getting horrible banner ads. I'm getting very relevant advertising to me on my phone. Right? So there I am. That's South Africa for those of you who haven't been. As you can see, I starred a lot of places in Stellenbosch because that's where all the vineyards are. So I use Google Maps and Google, like Baidu, is very good at allowing you to look at other people's referrals and find places. So again, I'm relying on other people's opinions. I'm not relying on advertising. I'm relying on somebody else who's been there and has said, this is a good place to go. So I start to uh, you know, look at places I can hang out in. I like cats, so I went to the cheetah outreach. So already, I'm starting to build a profile. And this is why TripAdvisor is scared shitless, because basically, Google is taking their picnic, right? Literally. Uh, there's reviews. And I'm in a world now where I'm relying on other people's reviews. So if you have a hotel, or you have a restaurant, or you have a physical outlet, I suggest you get on Google Maps as quickly as possible and get people saying nice things about you. And if they say bad things, go back to them nicely, okay? Uh, and then I start to save my, my trips into Google Trips. So already, I'm within that environment. Google suggests to me places I can go. So they're using their, their, their data, their analytics, and they're saying, you know, if you go to Cape Town and you've got half a day, this is the museum you should go to, et cetera. So they're already spoiling me. Uh, as you can see there, the day trips. And then, you know, I don't know so much about these restaurants, but what's great, we're all visual people, right? We want to see pictures. Because everybody has a mobile phone, there's pictures of all these places that I can go to. Uh, in Hong Kong, you might notice when people go out on a date, they don't actually look at each other in the eyes. What they do is they take out their phones and they take a picture of the food, right? First thing you do is you take a picture of the food. Then you might look across the table and look at the woman in the eyes, or you might just take your phone out and play a game. So, we're in a sad state. Lovely pictures of the food. Lovely food porn. Uh, and of course, reviews. Now this, this review business is huge on the internet. Uh, as you can tell from Amazon or Taobao or anywhere. This, I think, is a very unloved part of the internet. Is if you're selling a product like everybody here, you should have somebody in your company that their job is just to get reviews. All they do is go out there and get you reviews. Because those reviews are much more valuable than any advertising, I promise you. I don't have any maths behind it, but I promise you. Um, OK. So I'm there, and I'm in South Africa, and I go, I want to share my experience with other people. Because I got a lot of value 
from what other people told me. Now, the funny thing is, in the old days, you would call up a friend, and a friend would give you an opinion. Nowadays, research shows that people trust opinions of people they don't know more than their own friends, which is kind of weird, right? So I went in, and I go, right, I'm going to tell people uh, about this wine farm. It's great. Uh, I'm going to also take pictures of the wine. This is a very good app called Vivino. If you don't know anything about wine and you want to show off, or you want to learn if you're buying good wine, use this app, Vivino, right? So I go in there, I rate the wine. I have bought a lot of wine based on other people's ratings. And then I go back into Ctrip, and Ctrip is also asking me, you know, what do you think about this place? Was the information good? Was it good for families? So already I'm feeding stuff back into, you know, the Chinese diaspora. And yeah, I like, I like TripAdvisor. Uh, one of my reviews has got 500,000 views, so I go, yeah, cool, I'm back in there. So I'm contributing back into the community, right? Now, I'm not being incentivized to do this, but let me show you some, some numbers. You know, I'm not the only one doing this. These are numbers for Hong Kong. As you can see in Hong Kong, what always makes me laugh is that we all have one, more than one telephone, right? Everyone in this town has more than one telephone. Uh, and we do um, spend a lot of time on social media, right? And funnily enough, in Hong Kong, people say, oh, no e-commerce. Nobody, we don't need to buy anything in Hong Kong because it's outside the door. But actually, if you look at what's happening, is people are spending a lot of time starting to do e-commerce, right? They're using maps to find places. This is where, you know, you think about the technology independently and you're wrong. Uh, and they're also doing mobile banking. In the last year in Hong Kong, thank God, HSBC has launched a proper app. Until recently, mobile banking in Hong Kong was extremely painful. Okay? And e-commerce. If you look at e-commerce, this is just Hong Kong, a small place of 7 million people. What you mustn't forget, in Hong Kong, every year we have 50 million people who come to Hong Kong. So actually, the captive audience of Hong Kong is 57 million people. Um, so it's interesting to see that people are searching online. And here, purchasing by mobile. So a little, little small, measly Hong Kong, 40%, right? Now, what's interesting here, Hong Kong, to me, is a funny culture. We have three cultures in Hong Kong. We have what I call C2C, which is Chinese to Chinese. We have C to G, which is Chinese to Guaylo, which means Chinese to expat. And we have G to G, which is Guaylo to Guaylo, which is Westerners selling to each other, right? So obviously, our mixture of uh, social media channels includes all the uh, Western ones, as well as the Chinese, Japanese, Chinese. So we're a mix of everything here, right, in terms of platforms. But of course, our cousins across the border are using WeChat, right? Weixin. I went to an e-commerce conference a year ago. There was 1,600 people. Nobody had a name card. They all just scanned each other's uh, Weixin, right? So trash your name cards. Trash your labels. OK. Now, some examples. I don't know how much time I've got. Am I doing OK on time? You all understand? Are you keeping up with me? Good. So, uh, some examples of who's doing it well, okay? S um, Burt's Bees, have you heard of Burt's Bees? Okay, Burt's Bees is an American company that sells cosmetics, lip salve, uh, creams, all kinds of stuff. Uh, Burt's Bees it has a very big presence on social media in Hong Kong. Um, they have, they're very active, they're putting out content that's not just about their product, it's about timely stuff. So in Hong Kong last year, about this time of year, it got cold. Very cold. You know, it was cold. In Hong Kong, it doesn't normally get cold. And Burt's Bees already had a campaign ready. When it gets cold in Hong Kong, it gets dry. When it gets dry, your skin gets dry, your lips get dry. They had a campaign ready, so the timing was fantastic. They built the community, a bit like Ivan was talking about before. And they said, your lips must feel dry. Here's a special offer. 
And the offer was very unique because you had to go to the shop to collect it. You know, you don't send it via courier. It's, it's lipstick, lip, lip salve. It's not worth it. So they used it to pull people into the shop. This is what in China they call O2O. In the West, we call it omnichannel. O2O, online to offline. So they used the fact that it was cold, the fact that they had a community, the fact they knew they had a product that was relevant to that community, and they said, we've got a thousand products ready for you to come and pick up for free. Okay? And there's the lovely shop. What happened was, because they knew their audience, within 45 minutes, gone, right? They had a thousand people put in their mobile phone number and get a coupon saying you can go and receive, pick it up in this shop. The other thing was in the, in the shop they had technology to know who was coming in when, right? And they used this to upsell when people came to the shop, right? So a very good example of using the weather, timing, using a community with a, a relevant product and driving people into a store. If you talk to all retailers at the moment, they're all suffering because they're losing footfall. But a lot of them who are a bit smarter are going, how do I use online technology to drive people into my store during their customer journey? Which was why I showed you my travel journey because I was being hit with information at the right time, okay? So, example number two. This is in China. Anybody here from Dalu? The Dalu Rama. You mean you may young go jigama? Okay. So Starbucks goes coffee shops in China. It was where people go when they're young and they want to date and they want to look cool and they hang out, especially Starbucks. So they said, let's uh, tap let's tap into the fact that we have a community. Let's tap into the fact that they're on WeChat and they're in our stores. And let's allow people to send uh, coffees to each other. Gift a coffee, right? And the Chinese here is Yong Xing Shuo. Xing is the, they're, they're short for Xing Baku, right? So you could social gift. Again, this was Tencent using WeChat to teach people how to pay. Very clever, right? If you look at Apple, they haven't taught anybody how to pay with Apple Pay. These guys are teaching people, right? So there's the coupon. You can make it all groovy, and you can send it to a friend, but you have to use TenPay, a uh, uh, Tencent payment system, to do it, right? Very clever way of cap capturing an audience, allowing them to do a nice favor for a friend, and sending somebody into a coffee shop, right? So online to offline, O2O. Very good use of marketing in a world where we don't really care whether I'm in a shop or online. Right? It's the same thing. And finally, I oh know, second to finally, uh, this one is one that I saw recently, is crowdfunding. So would you believe it, Tencent has an e-commerce website called JD.com, Jingdong, right? It competes with Taobao, owned by Alibaba. Uh, and what they're doing is, is that they said, right, we're going to tap into this crowdfunding concept. And here is a mooncake company who in mid-autumn last month, uh, said, right, if you buy more cakes, we'll give you a discount. So over the period of 30 days, they got like 400 people who bought a hell of a lot of mooncakes, right? Just tapping into the community again. So then I went into this uh, crowdfunding site called Jingdong Dongcho, and I said, what's the most popular product? And here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the most popular product in China on the internet being sold is dry pork, right? Spicy dry pork is the most popular product on Jingdong. And if you look at this, uh, over 11, uh, there's 11 days left and 23,000 people have ordered spicy pork, right? So, and they've earned, they earned themselves a handsome 30,000 US dollars, so not bad. All right, very interesting. And if any of you are in the B2B world, because I often get asked by marketers, oh yeah, it's all about consumers. You know, we can't do business online, it's bloody difficult. How do we get business leads? This is a really clever uh, job by Maersk. And if you know Maersk and you're in the trading business, which a lot of you probably are, they're a shipping company. But they wanted to show that ships can freeze. 
right? And how um, they protect products from getting frozen. So they decided to share a lot of pictures of frozen ships on Instagram. And they use this to drive people from social media to a website to download a, uh, a brochure. And then these people became leads, business leads from social media, right? This is on LinkedIn and Instagram. From social media, they got people who are looking at shipping, not people buying lipstick, right? And what was interesting was they got scored above Disney uh, in social media for being the most engaging. It wasn't for very long, but still. The fact that they were more engaging than Disney is quite a shocker. Because Disney spends a lot of money, and if you have a child or a daughter, you know that Disney is all over them, right? Okay, so they generated 150 business leads, which doesn't sound big, but if you're in the shipping business, that's pretty big, right? And then I want to tell you a little bit about kind of what's happening now in marketing. I've got a couple of slides left. Uh, have you heard of Papi Jiang, right? She's a, a very smart millionaire woman. Uh, what's happening now is there's too much clutter on the internet. There's, people don't trust media, thanks to Donald Trump. People, people don't trust what they see. They know it's kind of advertorial, is it real, is it native, whatever. So now people are turning to influencers. And Papi Jiang is an example of a very successful influencer in China. If you watch her videos, she's absolutely mad. She swaps between English and Chinese. She's high energy. Uh, and she has 17, well, that was a bit out of date, but at the time she had 17 million followers. That's a hell of a lot of people. Bigger than a TV channel. And she reaches more than the population of my home country on a daily basis. Uh, and what I love about her is that she sold an ad slot in her video for three million US dollars. This is one individual with a camera. So be aware. The irony is in China is they charge you. And then here, we now see what's happening is the media owners, Weibo, WeChat, Youku, Tudou, they are all seeing that people want to watch videos of people talking about products. It's like the old days of television shopping. So this girl is uh, selling stuff through Weibo, which is connected into Taobao's marketplace. So immediately when she sells something, she gets a commission, right? This is all integrated. So if I was a brand like you, and I wanted, like some of these guys here, and I wanted to sell to consumer in China, I would get on the phone with these types of ladies and say, forget about advertising, I want to talk to you, right? And finally, I'm just going to give you some trends, right? And some trends that you can think about. Okay, the first thing is that social, this is why Google is terrified of Facebook, is that social is catching up uh, in terms of searching for product. If you go to, in the States, I believe Amazon, 35% of product searches start on Amazon, not on Google, right? Same thing is going to start, happens in China, but they're all more integrated in China. Uh, social commerce is what I just talked about, is people buying from social media is becoming um, very, very real. And the platforms, the Western platforms, are catching up with the Chinese. The Chinese are already integrated into payment systems, already integrated into shops. The Westerners are saying, ooh, that's interesting. And there's a lovely term, we love terms in the internet, dark social. That basically means if you're an advertiser, how do you get onto WhatsApp? How do I invade the space of a conversation between two individuals? How do I make that valuable? So that there's a space here where it's making advertisers think, hmm, how do I add value to uh, these very private conversations? And I promise you that WhatsApp, very soon, you'll start to see some strange kind of content that is a form of advertising, but it's more relevant to what you're talking about, right? And everybody's about video. There's a video there, there's video everywhere. If you look at it, in the, in the digital world, newspapers, everybody's trying to turn into video. Netflix, Amazon's got video. But what's interesting is if you're Amazon, you use video to drive people to your shop to buy stuff. 
If you're a media owner, you don't have a shop, so you're in trouble. And finally, what I think is really interesting here is that um, people are starting to realize they have employees, right? You need to connect all the, the spots between these people. You don't just have a sales team. Your customer service team are also a sales team. Your uh, product development team are also a sales team. So that's it. Quick one. WeChat, LinkedIn. Come and join me. Any questions? No questions? I did it in time, 28 right. minutes. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Wait, 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 wait. Any questions? Okay. No? Yeah. One, one quick, quick, quick. Uh, thanks. So I'm curious about what is Web, what is web Wednesday? Oh, Web, web, web Wednesday is, is uh, two things. It's a community of 7,000 entrepreneurs and digital marketing people. Uh, and we get together, we share ideas, we meet. We find money, we raise money for each other. It's, it's kind of step one before crowdfunding. Yes, yeah, yeah, open to everybody, especially you. Come on, later. <laughs> Any more questions? No? Okay, so Thank for you. more questions, you are very welcome to ask Napoleon directly at the floor. So please give a big hand to thank you, your wonderful speech.